Good morning, Azusa Pacific University. I hope and pray that you are doing well. Last night, as I watched the TV and watched the news and all the information that was coming through, I had a lot of mixed emotions. I didn't know um, how things were going to turn out and processed a lot with my husband as I watched. And I went to bed knowing that I might not know the outcome of the election. And here we are. We still are waiting to see what the outcome will be. So this morning, I have mixed emotions about what is it going to look like. And as I woke up, uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 really came to mind. And how do I posture myself so that I am entering into the season of waiting um, with prayer and not being anxious and allowing God's hope and his peace to really surround my mind and with my heart as well. And I was also reminded of the fact that when I woke up this morning, that God is still God and that he will continue to reign over us. Um, and as, as I sat in that truth, I was also reminded of the fact that the outcome of the election will have different experiences and impact on our community. And so I know that we've voted, many of us did participate, um, with our own convictions and our own belief about different things. And also in that, um, the impact is real. The way that people will experience this will be different. Um, and one thing that unites us is really the call that we have from God to love each other. And so in this season, how can we come together and speak and behave and act towards each other and love regardless of our own beliefs. And within our APU community, we have differences as well. I've seen people talk to each other in kindness, and I've also seen people talk to each other in ways that was not honoring to God. And so as we continue to wait for the outcome of the election, as well as as we continue to navigate this challenging season, can we continue to strive to be hands and feet of Jesus? Can we continue to strive so that we could love each other well? And the way that we live out our faith will be the testament and will be the reflection of who God is in our lives. So I want to challenge myself as well as all of you to really think and respond appropriately, respond in a way that is honoring to God, because that's what's going to matter. Um, I am in prayerful posture right now, um, and I want to continue to be in that state so that um, I could be, um, yeah, I could really, truly live out my faith in ways that would honor God. So I want to challenge each other, no matter what, um, be hands and feet of Jesus today. So let me pray for us, and we'll um, continue with our worship. God, Thanks for the fact that you are our God and that nothing is a surprise to you. As we wait for the outcome of the election, um, some of us may be surprised and maybe some of us won't be, but regardless of the outcome, you are not, um, and that you are constant and that you have been um, moving forward um, with us and before us. So help us to remember the fact that you will always be with us and help us to remember the call that you have on our lives to love each other and to continue to be your hands and feet. And I do pray for our leaders of this country and of the world as well. Um, I pray that as we continue to navigate what it looks like to lead, um, give them your wisdom, um, give them your um, yeah, guidance, Lord. And for those of us who are continuing to um, follow, I pray that you would also give us the ability to speak truth and love and also to live out our faith in the ways that would be honoring to you. So again, thank you for um, being our God. Thank you for the fact that you have never changed and that you have never left us. So help us to hold on to that truth today. It's in your name. Amen. What a privilege it is for us to be able to gather together and pray.
pray and worship in this season. We have access to an amazing God that is all-powerful and hears every one of our voices. And so I'd like to invite you into a time of singing together as we sing what a friend we have in Jesus. As we remember that we can come to God in any season with any request, any concerns, any doubts, any fears. And that's a wonderful opportunity, a privileged opportunity we have. So would you sing with me? Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, often forfeit and oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in trials and temptations this is their trouble
Well, good morning once again, APU. It's good to be together um, on this beautiful uh, day that we have together. You know, as I think about being the day after uh, the election day, which in many ways, if you were following along, um, as Dr. Simons, as Shino mentioned earlier, uh, in some ways a little bit of an anticlimactic uh, end of the day because uh, we've been accustomed to maybe knowing the results, maybe not. In, the, in recent years, in the 2000s at least, it's happened twice where we didn't know for sure at the end of the close of uh, the polls uh, and the close of the day on election day. And so we are uh, in, that, in that space as well in 2020 as uh, the ballots continue to be counted in various ways, which I know brings its own set of controversy in and of itself, um, but we are gathered together um, because it's a Wednesday, and on a Wednesday uh, at APU, uh, we worship, and on a Wednesday at APU, we pray, and on a Wednesday at APU, we look to Scripture, and so I want to remind us that I don't want to, um, uh, to belittle the significance of this day for our country, but I also don't want to uh, raise it to a point where we lose sight of the fact that uh, every single day that we wake up, whether it's the day after election or not, it is our uh, duty as those who are called to follow the path of Christ, uh, who've been invited uh, along that journey, who call Jesus Lord and Savior. It is our duty to wake up every morning and to simply say, Lord, here I am. Have your way in me. I'm not where I need to be just yet. And I need you to guide me. I need you to bring me to where you want me to be. I've made mistakes. I've sinned. I've fallen short. Um, and Lord, I want you and I ask you to guide me in that process. And so today, in many ways, is no different in that regard, because uh, if you are paying attention to uh, what's taking place, the atmosphere that's created in light of the, the election uh, environment, uh, there have been, uh, I believe, in many ways, examples of the body of Christ not 
uh, not really doing a great job of reflecting the character uh, and the witness of Christ during this time. Um, and, and, and yet there are other examples that I've seen of folks that are doing a fantastic job of, you know, having their own opinion, of being informed, but also treating others with respect and care and being willing to listen before drawing conclusions about what someone may believe or their own uh, personal character. Um, and so today I wanted to just share a few thoughts on uh, how things have been going up until this point. And I think more importantly, uh, I, I would like to share some thoughts as to how can we as believers, how can we as the body of Christ, maybe there are some students who are uh, joining us today and, and maybe you don't count yourself among that number. Maybe you would say, well, I'm not a Christian, so what does this have to do uh, with me? And, and so I would encourage you uh, to simply uh, look to, to scripture and look to guidance because I do believe that, yes, we do have a call as the church, as the body of Christ, but we do uh, also have a call in society. So I believe that these words and these remarks are fitting um, regardless of where you may be faith-wise. But for us specifically, those who are called, um, to be part of the body of Christ. We do have a calling that's high and that's higher than uh, the standard that we might be given in our society. And so I want to call us to that today in some ways. And, and as I begin, I, I just want to start by saying um, I am I'm thankful uh, for having the opportunity for my vo uh, voice and vote to be heard in this country. I recognize that that's not the case in different parts of the world. Um, in fact, I had a conversation with a, uh, a church member of mine, uh, an older gentleman who came to the United States from Romania. And Romania was, uh, was a communist country when he was growing up there. And, and he talked about the different freedoms that he didn't have. Uh, growing up in Romania, and he talked about the ways in which uh, his experience didn't allow him um, to fully express things like his faith. In fact, um, when he first, he was a Christian since he was young, but he had to go to an underground church where he wasn't allowed to sing, and the church that he was part of, if they found out, if the government of Romania during his childhood found out that they were part of that church, uh, there would be consequences, and, and in some cases, they might be imprisoned, um, and, and so the, when he first came to the United States as a young man, and he's lived here ever since, and he attended a Christian church here in the States, uh, almost as a secret Christian in Romania now, uh, trying to figure out how to live out his faith in this country, it was the first time he had ever heard instruments played and voices being lifted up to sing worship unto God. Uh, and I just want to give a little bit of perspective as to the, the various freedoms that we do have. Do we have a perfect country? Absolutely not. Uh, have we made it and we have no more issues? No way. There is, there is so much more for us to do and, and room for us to grow as a country. Uh, we have flaws. We are broken. We are divided. But we do have freedoms and experiences that many people around the world do not have. Um, and, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to participate in that process. In fact, my grandfather also uh, left uh, the Mexico under uh, terrible conditions and emigrated here to the United States when he was a young man. He received his citizenship by serving in World War II overseas in the U.S. Army. And, uh, and so for, for the rest of his life, he was a proud American, a uh, proud American citizen, and, and enjoyed the opportunity to vote and cast his voice as well in this great country. Um, so I first want to say that I'm thankful that we do have a country where we can participate in that process. But I also recognize that even participating in that process doesn't always seem fair. It doesn't always seem like there's adequate representation of every voice and every person and every experience. Uh, there are some folks who might think the, the results of this election mean very little because there might be an experience in your life that provides padding so that the immediate ramifications and imp implications of whatever administration it m remains or transitions into the White House might not have as direct of an impact on your life, whereas there might be others who have a very different experience and, and really do feel and believe that, um, that the, the results have a direct and immediate implication on their experience. So with that comes a number of different kinds of emotional responses. And, and I do believe that even us as APU, we're a very diverse uh, campus. We have different experiences. Um, our students come from different places, have different thoughts, beliefs. Folks vote differently. Um, and with that diverse uh, experience and expression, there also comes uh, emotion, emotional responses. I think generally one thing that we can all agree upon is one emotional response that we're carrying is uh, anxiousness. We just don't know. 
Um, we, don't, we don't know what the results will be. And, and uh, you know, again, some might have stayed up late last night to see whether or not there were any changes or got up early again this morning to see if there were any changes. And there's just a general fear of, of waiting and wondering uh, with anxiousness. Some might be experiencing fear during this time. Uh, there might be a fear uh, related to uh, the rhetoric and the kinds of uh, experiences that some may feel uh, re- depending on who uh, wins this election. Some might be feeling excited, uh, whether it be excited for the possibility of another four years of the Trump administration or, or whether it's excited about the possibility of a change and, and, uh, and something different. Uh, some might be feeling frustration or anger maybe even pain and sadness through this time. And, and I think in a lot of ways, maybe generally, there might just be a sense of exhaustion. Um, people are tired. People uh, want, want some, I've heard some say, I just can't wait for this to be done and over with uh, so that we can kind of move into the next thing and, and this uh, stops taking all of the, the space of headlines and, and various things that we may be going through. So I recognize that, that there are so many different emotions and emotional responses um, that may be experienced during this time. And I, I want to simply say um, that uh, regardless of whether those e- emotional responses um, are, are hitting you uh, very hard or, or, ve- or slightly, I want to just encourage you, keep in mind that on top of all of this, there's already been the added stress of trying to deal with the coronavirus pandemic. There's been added stress of trying to figure out how to do school from home and work that out with family uh, family. Um, situations and wherever our students may be at this time. So there's a compound um, impact and effect. And and that being said, uh, I want to simply say uh, to you students, make sure you are getting the support that you need. Uh, I know we've said it over and over and over and over again, but I want to continue to reiterate that, that APU, the faculty, the staff, we want to be here because there's nothing more important to us than making sure that you are doing okay and that you're, you, you are uh, making sure that your well-being is taken care of. Um, I, I, I've always said this, I, I, would rather, uh, I would rather make sure that you are well, I would rather make sure that I keep a, a good relationship with you than win an argument. And so that being said, in our culture and during this time, we want to make sure that every single student knows that if you want to talk through process, if you want to reach out to somebody, please do so and don't do this on your own. You know, another thing that it makes me think of during this time, uh, living at home, um, you know, working from home, being, being around the, home, uh, the house a lot more than what I'm used to, uh, my kids are around, and they hear things, and they see things, and, and uh, it raises a number of questions for them as, as you know, kids. I have an almost eight-year-old, I have a five-year-old, I have a two-year-old, um, he's the comic relief, so even if things get tense around the house, he always makes us laugh. Um, and, uh, and so, but my eight-year-old, my almost eight-year-old, he's going to turn eight this weekend. He comes up to me and, uh, and we're in a current situation where we have a few family members that are very outspoken and have very strong opinions politically. And they express those opinions freely, wherever it is that they are around my kids. Um, and, and then I also have a neighbor who thinks very strongly in the other direction politically, and also voices his opinions really loudly, and so my kids get to hear that, and, and we come back home, and, and, uh, and I have to uh, listen and listen to the questions that my, my kids ask, questions like, Dad, is that really true what, what our neighbor just said, or is that really true what our family member just said, or uh, how, how should I think about this? How should I feel about these things? And so we're even having to have these conversations at home together, and, and my prayer and my hope as I speak with them, I don't consider myself an expert and I don't have all the, uh, the most detailed responses, but what I would uh, share with my family members regardless, when I talk to my kids, regardless of what we might feel con- convictional and strongly about, the one thing that we feel most strongly about is loving one another. Why? Because that's a mandate that we have. We have a mandate from Christ to love one another. Uh, We could love and disagree. We could love and have argument. Uh, Loving one another doesn't mean that we need to pretend that there's no disagreements. But loving one another does mean that we have a deeper commitment to the respect, care, uh, to the love that we might have for others and how we live that out. And that's so crucial for us in the body of Christ. And that's one thing that I do believe we've been lacking during this time in 2020 that we need more of. In fact, I want to read for you um, a critical moment in the life of the earthly ministry of Christ where Jesus uh, comes before God. And this is a beautiful prayer where he's talking to his heavenly father. And you can imagine these are, these are some of his last few moments 
walking the earth in the short three, uh, 33 years that he lived here in his earthly journey. Um, and during that time, he comes to the tail end of it. He had preached the gospel. He had done all these things. He's getting ready to go to the cross, right? He's getting ready to be crucified on the cross. And, uh, and, and yet he takes some time away from the busyness, away from the noise, away from all of the politics, away from everything that was going on around him during that time. And he offers this prayer uh, to his heavenly father. And, and it is for you. And it is for me. Um, this prayer is for us, and this is what uh, Jesus prays in John chapter 17, verses 20 and following. He says this, My prayer is not for them alone, but I, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Now those are powerful words from Christ. And he's taking this moment to go before his heavenly father and to simply say, Lord, make them one. Bring them together. I mean, he knew that there were divisions. He knew that people didn't get along with each other. He knew that there would continue to be uh, uh, arguments and moments where the, the body of Christ would be tempted to split and divide and name call and become nasty and ugly and, and do all these different things. But Jesus prays passionately and desperately to his heavenly father to bring that body together, the followers of Christ together, to make them one. Jesus says, Father, just as you and I are one, would you make them one? And, uh, and pastorally, as I look out on the horizon and as I, uh, as I look to see, uh, is the body of Christ, the followers, the followers of Jesus Christ, are we one body? Are we united? And, uh, and it's difficult to say that in 2020, man, we might be a lot of things, but united isn't one of them right now. And I, I do wish and believe that we would heed the words of Christ, that, again, we can have difference, we can have disagreements, but we need to have unity to come together. This is what Jesus prayed for. This is what he would want for us to have. So in light of John 17 and this teaching from Jesus to be one, um, let me share a, a couple things uh, of my observations as I look out to see what's been going on. Again, I've been, you know, reading scripture, praying, talking with others, watching the news, reading the news, checking social media feeds, and I've seen so many different interesting things coming out. And again, I know that there are so many other folks who do not know Christ, so many folks who do not say, I'm trying to live my life as a witness to Jesus Christ. And, and really, honestly, I don't have a whole lot of words to say about how that's being done, because I don't expect a whole lot of Christ-like character to be coming from those who don't call themselves under the name of Christ. But for those who do, I do have that expectation. I, I do have that expectation that we're called to a higher standard. And so I am very encouraged as I look out, as I have conversations, as I see others, as I, I'm very encouraged as I, as I look at my social media feeds to see uh, some who are using their platform to spread love and not hate, right? To spread love and not hate. Uh, I'm very encouraged by those who are sharing their views responsibly with maturity and in avoiding inflammatory rhetoric. I'm very encouraged by those who have demonstrated the call to follow Christ, that it's higher, and, and it's higher than any call to follow a, a color like blue or red. Um, when we're called to follow Christ, we have a, a, higher, a higher standard. Um, but I'm also disappointed in some ways. I'm disappointed by those who have engaged in name calling, um, who, who, who have engaged in cutting themselves off from family and friends because of this season and this moment in 2020. I, I just think that, that that is placing this moment much higher on a pedestal than what it really should have in our lives. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed and, and, and uh, yeah, disappointed by those who have made assumptions during this time that there's only one way to vote Christian that there's only one way to put all of our eggs in one basket to say this is what it means to vote Christian. I, I'm encouraged by uh, someone by the name of Justin Gibbon. He's part of a, a group called the And Campaign out of Washington, D.C. 
Um, and, and he says this, and it really has, I, I think, in many ways challenged me to think about my own thoughts, and my own beliefs, my own convictions. Um, but he says, you know, oftentimes when we look at these two poles, these uh, political partisanship and, and the ways in which there's rhetoric that, that comes up around these different ways of thinking, different ways of voting. And he says, typically on, on the left, on the liberal side, you see a high commitment to things like social justice, to care for the poor, for the immigrant, for the marginalized. And then on the other side, you might see a high commitment to moral order, to family values, traditional values, to, to pro-life and some of these other issues that are very important. And, and what Justin Gibney has, has asked is, why is it that we as the body of Christ are forced to choose whether or not we believe social justice and, and the care for the marginalized is right or whether moral order and, and establishing these various things that are, that are providing these family values are important? Why can't we as the body of Christ say they're both important? But the reason why that's challenging is because we have to recognize that in the kingdom of God, there's a third way, right? We can't simply say we got to go this way or that way. There's a third way that we're called to in the kingdom of God, where we have to use our critical faculties, look to scripture for God to drive us in truth, to recognize that we both have to see that when we follow the call of Christ, we can't easily fit into categories that are set for us outside of the kingdom of God. Um, here's a, a quote from John Wesley, and I know Wesley has a, a significant um, contribution to, to this university. And here's something that he said in 1774, and I believe in many ways it still holds true today. He says, I met those of our society who had votes in the ensuing election, and I advised them, one, to vote without fear reward for the person they judged most worthy. Two, to speak no evil of the person they voted against. Three, to take care their spirits were not sharpened against those that voted on the other side. So again, yes, there are very strong opinions. Yes, there are beliefs, and I believe that is okay, and that is good. But please do not allow all of the rhetoric that comes along with this season to continue to drive a divide, especially within the body of Christ. You know, I think the, one of the ways that happens for us is we oversimplify if we fully buy into the rhetoric that's given to us. So it might go something like this. They want us to believe that if you, if, if you vote uh, Republican, that means that, uh, that you have to be this particular way. Or if you vote Democratic, R, and then fill in this blank, and we make these sweeping generalizations about people, and we think we know who they are just because of the way that they voted. That's simply not true. That is simply not true. We have to recognize that each person might have their own set of convictions, but let's be willing to ask questions. Let's be willing to listen. Let's be willing to have conversations rather than lump all these different groups into particular categories. So on, on, uh, on Monday uh, in chapel, we talked about a few things that I want to briefly reiterate. Um, we talked about kingdom citizenship. We talked about what does it mean for us to follow Jesus as Lord and to recognize that we do have a leader and his name is Christ, and he's given us a way uh, to live. Uh, we, we've talked about the fact that, um, that more than anything, we want to exalt the name of Christ, um, that John 17, as we just read, reminds us to come together, to be one. So we're, we're part of this, uh, this, this kingdom that we're citizens of, that God has called us to. Um, the second thing is we're called to love our neighbor. We're called to love our neighbor as ourselves. There's no room for ugly, hateful speech or action in the world, especially not within the body of Christ. Let's treat others with respect. Let's be willing to listen. Let's be willing to have conversations. And then let's live faithfully in light of the results. We still don't know what the results are. Um, and by the time you're watching this chapel, which may be on Wednesday or Thursday, we, we might not know or we might know. I don't know. Um, but even as we wait, one thing that we are certain of is that we have a call to live faithfully unto God in the midst of this time. So what I want to challenge us to, this might be a hard challenge for some. I want to challenge uh, you uh, to something like this. Regardless of who is elected in, I, I encourage you to pray for our elected leaders. Pray for them. Uh, you might not have voted for them, but I encourage you to pray for them. Um, and, and I do believe that is consistent with our call as followers of Christ. I also encourage you, regardless of what uh, the outcome may be, uh, to not just pray, but also to hold our elected leaders accountable. That is a privilege that we have in this country to do that as well. So we need to be uh, recognized we are part of a kingdom citizenship, that we we're to love our neighbor, that we're to live faithfully. And we need to recognize that we come together with so many different experiences, different feelings, different thoughts during this time. 
Um, so as we get ready to close our time together, we are in a moment going to continue in worship because I do believe that it will be important for us um, to open up our hearts, to open up our minds, to open up uh, ourselves, to simply say, Lord, I don't know how to feel. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, my hope is that we could take advantage of this time as we, as we close together today uh, to simply uh, go before the Lord and, and to say, Jesus, we need you. Our country needs you. Um, my family needs you. Uh, I personally need you right now because I'm not exactly sure what to do with the, the emotions that I have. Um, I want to encourage you during this time um, to maybe quiet yourself, maybe close your eyes, maybe put your hands out in a posture of reception and, and simply ask God to guide you during this time. Uh, maybe there are some of us that need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe we've said things and done things that we're not proud of and that if we really asked ourselves, is that truly a reflection of Christ, our answer would be no. If that's true, then maybe this might be a good time to come before the Lord and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. Uh, I'm sorry that I tried to uh, uh, do this without asking you to guide me in, in, the, in the various ways that I ought to live. Um, so, so, so use this moment as we close um, as an opportunity to simply reflect, uh, to simply invite Jesus to come in and guide you, to guide your heart, to guide your words, to guide your thoughts, to guide your actions. Um, I want to um, I want to say this prayer uh, from St. Francis of Assisi, and then James is going to lead us in uh, another song of worship together before we close. So would you join me uh, in prayer as we uh, prepare to sing another song and close together? Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine Lord, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Speak to me, oh 
God speak to me? Yes, I am listening. I am waiting. Speak to me. So pull me in closer, close to your heart. May I be a pure reflection of all you are. Love that is patient, love that is kind, and love that keeps no offenses or wrongs in mind. Make me like Jesus. Make me like Jesus. My heart is an open space for you to come and have your way. I'm open. I'm open. My heart is an open space for you to come and have your way. us to be like you, teach us to be like you and to love like you.
Let the light of heaven shine as we step into the dark. Oh, give us your heart. Oh, give us your heart. All to see your kingdom come and death depart. So give us your heart. Oh, give us your heart. Let the light of heaven shine as we step into the dark. Oh, give us your heart. Oh, give us your heart. All to see your kingdom come and death depart. Oh, give us your heart. God, we need your heart. We're praying, give us your heart. So God, as we navigate today, these next couple of days, this next week, these next couple of weeks, God, would you give us your heart? We open our heart to you. Would you speak to us? May you teach us how to love like Jesus in this season. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise because you are always worthy. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.